What's up everybody? My name is Luis, this is Crazy Tech, and today we're gonna to be going over the first keyboard that I've ever featured on this channel, and that is the K380 Wireless Keyboard by Logitech. Log Log Logitech. Logitech. Anyways, I've been using this keyboard for a couple months now, and I've come across a couple positive aspects and a couple negative aspects. So I'm gonna go over all that today, and we'll see if this is a good buy for you. When it comes to keyboards, you're either one of two types of people. One, you either don't care about what the keyboard can do and like all these special features or how loud the keys actually sound, and you really just wanna use the keyboard for what it's meant to do, type. Then there's the second group of people, and they are super critical about the type of keyboard that they're using. They wanna know if the keyboard can be taken apart and put back together, the types of caps that they're using, the brand of switches they're using, and if it's an 80% keyboard, 100% keyboard. These people are just super critical about what kind of keyboards they're gonna be using. And I totally understand that because that's kinda of how I am with some of my tech. So starting the video, I'm just gonna talk about the most basic component of this keyboard, which is the fact that it is wireless because having a wireless keyboard is just so much better than having a wired one. Of course, you do come into connection problems because you know Bluetooth isn't perfect, but for the most part, I don't think I've ever had issues connecting this. I've had one small incident, but it was definitely on my part, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Having a wireless keyboard is super convenient because that means that you can use it with a lot of different devices. It is Bluetooth, so for me, I connect it to my iPad mini, my iPad 8. I could even connect it to my phone if I want to, but I do feel like that's a little bit redundant. Something cool that this wireless keyboard could do is it could switch between the keyboards that it's connecting to. So you could have up to three devices connected at the same time, and then you pretty much just tap a button and it switches to the next device. Logitech does make good keyboards and this one was no different. I actually thought this was a really good purchase. It was only 40 bucks and I don't use this with my iPad 8 as much. I actually end up using this with my iPad mini. The reason that I like using this with my iPad mini is one of the same features that I like about like all my products. So if you've watched some of my past videos, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'll give you three seconds to guess. One, two, three. Okay, it's portability. That is, it's so small. Like, look how much, look how much bigger this is than my iPad mini. It, it's not that big of a difference. And honestly, that's the number one reason that I like this keyboard. I'm actually able to fit it in my bag with my iPad mini. It's super easy to carry around. And that's just one thing that you can't really find in a keyboard. A lot of keyboards end up being really bulky and long and fitting them in a bag is almost impossible. So that's one of the things that I really appreciate about this keyboard. It's very small, compact, and I really like the aesthetic of it also because having these rounded keys, it's not something that I thought I would like when I first bought it, but now that I use it every now and again, it was very easy to get used to. Next, we'll talk about how this keyboard is actually powered and unfortunately, it's not rechargeable. And yes, I do have a sticker on the back because this was my fiance's keyboard first and I promised her I wouldn't take this sticker off. But this actually takes two AAA batteries and I really don't know how to feel about this. I don't like the fact that it runs off AAA batteries, but at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me. Just buy some rechargeable batteries. I have tons of rechargeable AA batteries that I use for my Xbox controllers, and buying some AAA batteries wouldn't be that big of a deal, especially because I think they last a long time due to the fact that using a keyboard's not gonna take a lot of power. And whenever you have the batteries in, you pretty much just hit this switch on the side and it turns on. And now we'll talk about the small issue that I had earlier because whenever you're pairing this to a device, it's actually gonna ask you for a code and you know, small mistake, I should have read the instructions but I figured it was a simple Bluetooth device, I just pair it very easy. So whenever you first pair it, it asks you to put a six digit pin in and me, I just put the pin in and I expected it to pair and it didn't. So I was kind of thrown off. But later on I asked my fiance because she has the same keyboard, she just has it in purple. So she told me you had to press return or enter. And I felt really stupid at the end of that because that was such a simple fix. <laughs> and I'm actually the techie and she's the one that had to figure it out for me. So you'll put in your six digit pin, press enter and it'll pair. When it comes to using the keyboard, it could take some getting used to because all of these keys are squished together to make it small and compact. And if you have bigger hands, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. Thankfully, this keyboard is at a little bit of a slant, so it's not uncomfortable whenever you're typing on it. You actually have somewhere to rest your hands and, you know, a little bit of space for you to just go ahead and start typing. 
So you do have a couple function keys at the top, such as adjusting your brightness, switching the track back and forth, play, pause, muting the volume, turning the volume down, turning the volume up. But also with the iPad, there are a couple function keys that just are useless because this was made for a Mac. So keep that in mind. There's what F6 and F7. They're completely useless keys if you're using it on an iPad or a phone. But it's understandable this was made for the Mac and I just happened to use it for my iPad. This keyboard also comes in a couple different colors, which earlier, I, I think I said it came in purple, but I was wrong. It actually comes in white and pink, and I ended up having to buy my fiance the pink one because she saw it, and I ended up having to spend $40, and I'm not too happy about it, but I ended up with the white one. So white goes with pretty much everything, so I guess I can't complain, right? If you like the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe and go ahead and leave me a comment on how you feel about this keyboard so far. I've actually never made a keyboard video, so I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job of going over this, but let me know down in the comments and let's get on with the video. Real quick, we'll go over all of the positives and negatives of the keyboard and pretty much recap everything. So the first positive is that it is small and compact and it actually has the full function keys, has arrow keys, and it's really easy to fit in a bag. The second positive is the multi-device compatibility. You could attach it to an iPad, a Mac, a phone, and it's really easy to switch in between the three. The third positive is that there's color options, and I don't know if there's more than the white or pink, but I really like the white myself, and my fiance has a complaint about the pink, so that's a positive to me. The fourth positive would have to be the rounded keys, and this could be either a positive or a negative for you. But whenever I first got it, I was really worried that I wasn't going to like the rounded keys. But as I've used it, I've gotten used to it and I really like it. The fifth positive for me is something else that could be either a hit or miss for you. And that's the fact that these keys are so quiet. The final positive for me is going to have to be the $40 price point because you get so much out of this keyboard for $40. Of course, there are some bad things such as the fact that it's built out of plastic and then it also runs off a of battery. But either way, $40, it's hard to even just find a wireless keyboard in itself. And I feel like this one offers every single thing that I would like in a keyboard. For 40 bucks, it's really hard to beat. So now we'll get on to the first negative and I am being a little bit petty here, but I do not think that this keyboard needs a passcode to be able to connect through Bluetooth. It just takes away from the ease of use and again if you're like me and you just you know didn't see it on the instructions it could be a little bit annoying to think that your keyboard just doesn't work because you didn't press enter but you connect all these other different bluetooth devices without having to put codes in i do not understand why this keyboard needed some kind of passcode to be connected the second negative of this keyboard is gonna have to be the fact that it's not rechargeable and it actually runs on batteries thankfully it takes a while for these batteries to die so it's not something that i noticed too much but it would have been a lot better if I could just charge this whenever it died. The third negative will have to be these two function keys that don't do anything whatsoever, but that's totally on me because I don't use a Mac right now and maybe if I did have a Mac, I would see some use in these two keys, but as of right now, I, I don't see any point in them. It's not terrible, but useless to me. There are a couple personal preferences that would help you decide if this is a good keyboard for you, but for me, I think this is a really good buy. It's a perfect keyboard to pair with either your iPad or your Mac, and maybe even your iPhone if you're into that kind of thing. But that's all I have to say about it. If you wanna watch another video where I go over all of the apps that I use on my iPad Mini 6, go ahead and check it out. I'll leave it on screen right now. You guys have a good rest of your day and be safe.